everyone and welcome back to my channel where I help writers like you change the world with storytelling. In today's video we are going to be talking about four ways to make your story's theme strong and memorable. So this isn't the first time that I've talked about story theme here on my channel. If you're not sure what story theme is, if you need a refresher, or if you need help figuring out what your story theme should be, I will leave the previous video that I did linked up in the cards where I talked about what story theme is. But if you've already figured out kind of what message you want to teach with your story, and you just need help making sure that it doesn't feel just stuck in there and irrelevant, this video is for you. The first tip that I have for you probably seems really obvious, but it's actually easier said than done, and it's make it relatable. So when I did my Camp NaNoWriMo project, I'm probably going to be referencing this project quite a bit in this video. If you are interested in watching the vlogs of that project, I will leave them linked up in the cards as well. But when I did that project, I struggled to make the theme relatable because I was concerned that the main character's backstory was going to be way too different than the experience of most of my readers. And this is a really common thing in fiction. Many times characters have tragic backstories that hopefully the readers, or at least most of them, aren't going to be able to relate to in their real lives. So in that case, how are you going to make your theme memorable whenever your character is coming from a place and from experiences that aren't relatable? This is an art. It's something that you have to practice, and it's something that sometimes you have to fix and tweak and work on and adjust as you're writing the story. So with my Camp NaNoWriMo project, I kind of went back and forth between a couple different variations of the theme until I found the one that seemed to resonate the most deeply with the character in a way that would also resonate with the readers. So you just have to not be afraid to adjust as you go along as you shape the story theme, but also figure out kind of what perspective you're going to take on it, what angle you're going to come at it from. You have to be willing to play around with it in order to kind of hit that place of making it relate to yourself, to the character, and to other people. The second tip that I have for you is to make it tie into a biblical truth. So my Camp Night Around project, the biblical truth that I wanted to tie into is that our identity is found in Christ, regardless of how other people label us, what other people think of us, how our past or the past of our parents or our family define us. That was the biblical truth that I wanted to incorporate into that story. I cannot tell you how making your story's theme grounded in scripture will make it so much more powerful because all of a sudden, instead of just having a nice, positive, uplifting theme, you are basing it on the truth of God's word. And, you know, God's word is powerful, right? It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It's the best thing that you could be incorporating into your book to leave a life-changing impression on your readers. So I cannot stress enough how making sure that your theme is also a biblical theme. So my theme obviously was your identity is found in Christ no matter what. If you are, you know, a Christian and have made Jesus Lord of your life, he is your identity no matter what. You know, that comes from scripture, but that was incorporated into the entire story. And so it doesn't have to be as preachy as it sounds. Just basing it off of that scriptural truth and communicating that scriptural truth will make it so much more powerful. Hello everyone, Sponsor Karina here to let you know that this video is brought to you by you! Support from subscribers like you helps keep me encouraged and motivated to continue producing Christian writing videos. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and smash that button to make my day. If you haven't already, please do give a friendly little handshake to the like button to let the YouTube algorithm know that you want to see more Christian YouTubers. If you would like to support me financially, you could become a member of Korean's crew over on Buy Me A Coffee to get exclusive behind the scenes and work in progress updates. Thank you so much for your support, as always, and let's get back to the video. So the third thing, which again, I practiced doing this with my Camp NaNoWriMo project, remember, practice makes progress, is make the story theme directly tie into the antagonistic force. So what I mean by this is I feel like a trap that a lot of people tend to fall into with villains and antagonists is they try so hard to make them scary that they just feel kind of detached from the story and don't really contribute anything to the internal struggle of the characters or the intensity of the scenario. Basically, they're just scary. And this doesn't apply just to antagonists characters. This can just apply to any antagonistic force in your story, if it's situations or whatnot. It can be very easy to 
make it melodramatic for the sake of making it produce a bigger impact with your readers. But actually, one of the best ways to make your antagonistic force memorable and even more intense is to have it be the opposite of the theme you're trying to get across. Now, I don't mean take this to the extreme and have your antagonistic characters or your antagonistic force just be wholly evil and totally ridiculously melodramatically bad and the antithesis of the theme you're trying to communicate. Don't go that extreme. That will feel very odd and very few types of stories can pull off a villain like that. I strongly don't recommend you create that extreme of a villain. It's just not a very good idea and honestly is kind of not a good representation of how evil comes to us in the world. Usually evil doesn't come in the form of a completely terrifying and stereotypical villain. It comes to us in much more subtle ways. Not to say you can't have a scary villain, but don't be extreme. But what you can do without being extreme is have where whatever your antagonistic force is, be it a person, be it a situation, have it be directly challenging the truth, the theme that you're trying to communicate. For example, on my NaNoWriMo project that I was doing for, for Camp NaNoWriMo back in July, my theme was your identity is found in Christ. So because I had this character trying to step into her identity in Christ, she had a situation where she felt relatively small and helpless and powerless. And on top of that, she had somebody who was making her feel irrelevant. And that directly contradicted the truth that no matter what her past was, no matter what happened, she was valuable to God. She had an identity in him. And it sounds a little bit less relevant out of context. And obviously, I don't want to give away the entire story. But having that character who was kind of challenging her worth based on how he was treating her directly contradicted that she was valuable to, you know, Christ because of Christ. And so that made her realizing the truth of her identity in Christ even more powerful because all of a sudden she had the strength to stand up to this antagonist. And also it gave her the courage to face other situations that weren't just the antagonist that she might have avoided otherwise because she was afraid of being judged. So the fourth thing that you can do to make your story theme strong and memorable is portray the characters change, portray their arc, portray how they grow in accordance with your story theme in a tangible way. I think we've all read stories where a character has this thing that they struggle with and then towards the end of the book, in the climax, they either make a very similar mistake or they just never get the chance to show that they have decided to stop making that mistake. Whether it's books or movies, I think we all have experienced a story like this. And not only is it disappointing as a reader, but it means that the author totally missed an opportunity to communicate that story theme that they were looking to communicate. And so I think it's very important, and again, this comes with practice and it's easier said than done, to make sure that your character demonstrates their change in a tangible way, in a choice that they are making. It doesn't have to be like a drawn out mental monologue where they're like, okay, I'm making this choice, I've come to this moment. That is a good way to practice kind of figuring out how they're gonna make that mental switch. I've done that in a lot of my earlier projects where right before the climax, I had a character kind of working in their head through the issue. You don't generally want to save all of that for right before the climax, it kind of kills the momentum. But if you need to use that as a way to practice the character having a mental switch, having that aha moment, you totally can do that. And if you're not really sure how to write an aha moment, it would actually be a great exercise to be like, here's where the character was, here's where the character needs to be kind of before they realize the truth and then after they realize the truth and then kind of write that in their head, what's going on to help them, you know, realize the truth of God's word that they're going to then stand upon as they face the climax. Make sure that you're having your character show that they've grown in whatever it is that they're dealing with. I had in my Camp Manorama project where my character stood up not necessarily to the antagonist but just in front of a group of people which honestly the antagonist wasn't even her fear as much as being judged by groups of people was. And so she stood up in front of a group of people in a situation, you know, I don't want to give away too much from the story, but she stood up for her identity in Christ. You know, she said, this is who I am in Christ. I'm not defined by what my parents did before me or whatever. I'm defined by Jesus and 
I know who I am in him. And so that was her tangibly expressing that she knew who she was and demonstrating that change from being very insecure and not really knowing if she could feel good about herself, what her identity was, to I know who I am in Christ. I stand on that and I celebrate that. So I hope that that gives you an idea of some ways to make your story's theme strong and memorable, make it relatable, make it tie into a biblical truth, make it tie into the antagonistic force, and lastly, demonstrating the change of the character as it demonstrates the story theme in a tangible way. So all of these things combine to make the character's final choice to ultimately overcome their misbelief all the more powerful because the reader just feels much more in touch with the story theme. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video as we talk about more Christian writing tips. Bye-bye!